There's a, a saying that mother is a verb, not just a noun, and it's true. And, and so I think that we do have the ability to influence children's lives, whether it's whether we're teachers or, or aunts or sisters. I try very hard to be a role model to younger girls, whether it's my nieces or, or friends' daughters. And it, it's like, look, you can you can have these things, and and you can travel and have money and have a career and um, <laughs> you know have all the things you want and and volunteer and be a good person. Um, and so it's important to me to set that example for for other women because that's all I really hope is that. Um, people make a conscious choice and really sit with themselves and think about, is this really what I want or is this what is expected of me or what someone else wants from me? Welcome to We Are Child Free, a podcast about child-free women and the lives we lead. I'm your host, Zoe, and each episode I speak with another incredible woman about her decision not to have children and what it's meant for her life. Today I'm talking to Marie Fisher, an environmentalist and atheist based in Portland, Oregon, who plays the role of the cool aunt in her big blended family. Marie is one of 12 siblings and has 13 nieces and nephews. She's really involved in their lives and tries to be a role model for the younger girls especially, to show them they have options and can make a difference whether or not they decide to have kids. Marie's doing her part to leave a better world for future generations by limiting her environmental impact and volunteering for various non-profits. We spoke in 2020, just before Amy Coney Barrett was appointed to the US Supreme Court, when things were looking very Handmaid's Tale, and Marie's message rings as true now as it did then. Stand your ground. Think hard about what you want your life to look like, and when you've made the decision that's right for you, Stay firm. So empowering, right? Enjoy my conversation with Marie. In some regard, I've always known. Uh, as a child, I, you know, I, I didn't play with dolls. I, I didn't pick out children's names. Um, sort of some of those typical things that I think they expect from little girls. It was just uh, when I envisioned my future when I was a child, I, I envisioned being a businesswoman and, and going to work every day. And, <laughs> and there was there was really no but you know, no child in that, uh, that vision. So I, I think it probably wasn't until maybe post-college uh, in my early to mid-20s where I sort of solidified that. Um, but, you know, it, it was never really a decision for me. Um, it just wasn't something I assumed that I'd be doing. I see. So where did you grow up? I grew up in rural New Jersey on the east coast of the U.S., Okay. And where are you now? I'm in Portland, Oregon. So now I live on the West Coast. Okay. And you come from a really uh, big family. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> really big. <laughs> I do. I come from a blended family. And so um, I was a child of a second marriage on both sides. And, and so both of my parents had children from previous marriages and they each had five. So, wow. uh, and then they had me and I have a younger sister. So that would be 12 in total. Amazing. Wow. <laughs> Woo, that, that is a lot. That's a lot. And it was it, I mean, what are your memories from back then? You know, is it, was yeah. it a fun childhood? Was it just, you know, everyone running around screaming? It was chaotic. <laughs> it, that's how I remember it is, is chaotic. I was always a quiet child and I liked solitude and it certainly wasn't that. Um, there's a pretty substantial age gap. And, and so um, some of my older siblings were already in their, their late teens and, and 20s and so didn't live in the home when I was growing up. So it wasn't like there were 12 of us in the home at the same time. But right. um, there were, you know, always a handful of us, four, five, six at any given time. Um, and as you can imagine, some of my older siblings were having children when I was quite young. And so I've been an aunt for really as long as I can remember. Um, so, yeah, it was. It was, it was chaotic. There were, it was always a helpful house and, and we didn't have a lot of money and it was a small house. And so, you know, sharing bedrooms, sharing a single bathroom, meal times were just crazy. Right. You know, you, uh, yeah, I can, I can only imagine. I have a, a twin sister, but my family, that, that's it really. It's just my parents, my auntie and uncle. And, um, I can't really comprehend what it must be like to have so many <laughs> family members. Um, so I imagine the holidays must be, uh, 
chaotic as well. <laughs> they, they were. They were quite chaotic. Uh, my parents have both since passed and there's no longer any sort of expectation around, you know, those big holiday events anymore, uh, which is actually quite a relief for me. Yeah, I mean, it's funny that, yeah, we can kind of uh, fetishize, you know, the, the kind of the holidays and the time with you, you're spending with family and uh, and the reality of it can be quite different, um, can be quite stressful sometimes. Oh, absolutely. Very, very tense. I, I was always the child who was, you know, finding a quiet place to hide with a book during holidays. Okay, so you're more of an introvert. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so how many um, nephews and nieces do you actually have then? I have 13. Wow. Of varying, varying ages. Uh, my younger sister actually was the most recent to, to have a baby. Uh, she has a two-year-old, but I have nieces and nephews in their mid-30s. So how did your family kind of take to this decision not to have children? I do have other siblings uh, without children, whether through choice or, or circumstance. And so I think they were always very accepting of it. Uh, my mother, when she was alive, loved her grandchildren. I mean, she just lived for, for the children in the house. But, but there were always plenty of them. So I, I, never, I never felt any pressure um, to have any of my own. And I mean, because this was something you kind of knew from a very early age, I'm imagining you never needed to tell anyone, you know, it's not like you needed to make the statement, I'm, by the way, I'm not having children, or did you ever need to kind of make that to someone in your family? I don't think I ever needed to, but I, I think I did quite a lot, actually, growing up from, not that I recall, but from what I've heard from others that I, I was always saying I wasn't having children. It's, uh, it's, it's funny, my younger sister has a, a teenage daughter now who has also been proclaiming that she's not having children, uh, <laughs> which I find rather amusing. We'll, we'll see what ends up happening. <laughs> Can you understand why you, you decided so young not to have children, or was it just something that was so natural to you? I think, um, like I said, I, I never really had the desire anyway, but when I thought about it, um, there was just... Uh, my family certainly had its troubles, and I watched, you know, siblings and, and nieces and nephews go through different stages of life um, that were challenging for them. And I think I've always sort of had the sense that I didn't want that responsibility of, of bringing someone into the world and and ultimately being responsible for, you know, their their upbringing and their, and their happiness and watching them struggle. And um, yeah. to me, it just seemed like this vast responsibility that, quite honestly, I never wanted. And you have enough family members who kind of provide the, the, those, you know, children. If you, you, you wrote when you applied um, to me initially about how you love your nephews and nieces and you actually took one of your nieces on holiday as well. I have, yeah. Several of them um, have come out to visit me on the West Coast. I, I took my niece to London and Paris when she was 10. Um, Amazing. I have I have traveled with them, and um, yeah, I've never had a shortage of children in my life, even <laughs> even as a young child. So, you know, uh, <laughs> babysitting, changing diapers, that that sort of thing, I had plenty of experience with it. So the decision was certainly not an uninformed one. Um, yes, I wouldn't say that I like children, to be quite honest. And I do feel, as a child free person, often sometimes that's the caveat that we feel like we have to make when we're explaining our child free free choices because it's it's one thing to say you don't want children i think it's even a, a another to take it a step further and say you don't like them uh people that doesn't sit well with people um mm. i don't particularly like children uh my nieces and nephews are you know i i enjoy spending time with them but in limited amounts as well mm -hmm. um so i children are, are just not really part of my adult life um, I live, yeah. you know, in the city. Um, I socialize with other adults. I, I do have friends who have children, but their lives change quite a bit once they have children. And so I don't see them as much either. Um, and when we do, we try to do, you know, very adult activities. And, and so, um, the, you know, my day to day doesn't involve children for the most part. And I'm quite happy with that. Yeah, people really do take offense if you if you ever kind of suggest that you might not, you know, love every child that's yes. on this earth. Uh, it's you know they really take offense to it, which is kind of crazy because you know when when uh, I mean when I've seen my friends 
and their children are running around or screaming or, you know, it, the beginning part doesn't look that fun. <laughs> <laughs> it really doesn't. No. So it's like, well, what's the good part about this? Please tell me. <laughs> no. And, and even, I mean, now, you know, watching, uh, I'm 44. And so I have friends with, uh, you know, who had children earlier, who their children are now in, in high school or college. And, and so they're grown. And, you know, it, there is nothing about it that has ever appealed to me. I have never once, you know, spent time with a, a friend's child and thought, oh, maybe I could do this or I want to do this. In fact, the more time I spend with children and, and listen to my friends who have children, you know, the more it reaffirms my decision not to have them. And have you ever faced, you know, any criticism, you know, from either someone who you know or from a stranger for the decision? Or has it been all relatively supportive? I would say more from strangers and, and it doesn't happen so much now in my forties because I think, you know, that, that phase is sort of past, but I would say definitely in my twenties and and thirties, more strangers, um, you know, colleagues at work or um, Mm -hmm. older women, older women love to to give advice to younger women. Um, Right. And, and so I, I certainly remember those conversations, silly things like who's going to take care of you when you're older, which of course is absolutely no, guarantee anyway <laughs> right yeah um, children desert their their parents all the time when they get older um, absolutely so yes I, I i not to you know an extent i would say um and certainly not from people close to me or from family members so i was lucky that way right yeah because you your um career is in the healthcare pharmaceutical industry is that right that's correct. And on the corporate side of things in marketing. And so um, I've always worked in, you know, headquarters and home offices and, and, you know, sat in an office behind a desk. And I mean, yeah, because this is something that child-free women, you know, get told a lot that we choose our career uh, over having children. And um, I mean, I don't see if there's, any, there's anything wrong with that, to be honest. Uh, you know, you should be able to choose. You should be able to choose what you do with your life. And if that is career, then why not go for it? You know, um, I mean, ha- have you noticed anything in that industry, um, you know, regarding child free women, how they're treated or, uh, you know, when women have children, obviously, then lots of women, sadly, don't go back to their careers, um, right. which, which is which is a real shame. I do. I do have some thoughts about it. My my uh, industry is very male dominated to begin with, and and so right. typically at the top are are mostly men, many of whom have families, and <laughs> but of course you know the same demands aren't placed on them. Um, no, you know I I am very I understand that working mothers have it tough, and I, and I do work with you know women who are either primary breadwinners or or you know have careers um, and you know deal with childcare. Um, I will say that I, I have always felt like there is an expectation that uh, child-free people don't have the same demands on their time or their mm. their time outside of the office isn't as valuable. And so I do feel like there is often precedence given to women who have children to make um, uh, to make concessions um, for them in the workplace. You know whether it's having to leave early to pick up a child at daycare or or having to work from home because a child has a doctor's appointment. Um, Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that shouldn't happen, but I do feel like that should be my time to me outside of the office is just as valuable as someone who has a family. And whether, (laughs) whether that's me sitting on my sofa with a glass of wine, you know, or, or someone tending to their children, you, I don't feel that you can place different values on that. And so um, the one thing I, I would say about the workplace in general that has always bothered me a little bit is an expectation that child-free people can work longer hours or work later or, or take the travel or um, that, our, that our time just isn't as valuable. Yeah, no, it's ridiculous. I mean, you also um, told me that you work on a uh, on the board of a local nonprofit organization for HIV and AIDS. So you obviously fill your time outside of your job with a lot of things as well. And why shouldn't you be given the same um, priority for your free time as yeah people who have children? But yeah, that's absolutely true. And, and so I, I do, um, I work for uh, several nonprofits. Um, mm-hmm. and I do volunteer my time. And, you know, of course, I have a, a host of other things that I like to do outside of work. And, and I usually travel extensively, not now, of course. But um, and, and so, yeah, it's, it's true. I'm not, you know, sitting at home, um, you know, watching, you know, television shows, um, when I'm not at work, I am quite busy and, and maybe, you know, it's, it's not child rearing, but I do, it is important. 
Absolutely. I mean, this is, yeah, we're always kind of told that child-free women are, are selfish. And actually, it's in my eyes, I see child-free women as the, the people who contribute so much um, to their communities. And they have the time, the energy, the money um, to give back you know, a bit more perhaps than people who can be so focused on their family, like, you know, rightly so, raising a family takes so much energy and so much of yourself. You know, do those people really have anything left to give back to other, um, you know, organizations or communities? And, and you know, child-free women actually can have that ability to give back so much more. So, um, I wish we were kind of seen a bit more in that positive light that actually, you know, we aren't selfish and, you know, like you said, just sitting on our, on our sofa, uh, enjoying, uh, you know, a glass of wine and chilling. Um, although that is also valid, like you said. <laughs> Absolutely. And Zoe, I'm so glad you brought up the um, concept of selfishness because it is mm. one that I think is a common thread um, for child-free women, um, this idea that mothers are selfless and child-free women are selfish. And and first of all, I don't balk at the term selfish. Uh, we're all selfish and we all prioritize things in our life. And and yes, absolutely, I'm a selfish individual. Uh, but this idea that people who choose motherhood are, are selfless is, is quite honestly silly to me. If you ask, we, we get asked all the time, you know, why, why don't you have children um, or what was that decision about yet if you were to ask a, a parent why did you decide to have children it always starts with I wanted that's always the response I wanted yeah um, and so to me um, I will be so bold and and provocative as to say that I believe the decision to have children is very selfish um, yeah. and and maybe the you know the reasons behind it are, are good um, but it is still a selfish decision and, and I challenge anyone who says that it's not Absolutely. I mean, you know, there are loads of kids who uh, need homes desperately. And when people, you know, they do just jump to the first easiest option, which is to have their own children. And I'm not saying that's wrong, but I am saying also look at yourself before you say to another person, they are selfish, because perhaps you might be just as selfish in another way. Um, and you're entitled to that form of selfishness if you like um but yeah why do you think there is this stigma then for child-free women where does it stem from i think a lot of these um sort of outdated notions just stem from a different period in time when women didn't have as many choices and um i'm also atheist and, and that's another important part of my identity and i do believe that a lot of this comes from um, religion and the acceptance yeah. of religion um uh, particularly, I can speak to the U.S. Um, and this idea that, you know, this is what women are supposed to do. And mm -hmm. and now women have more opportunities in terms of careers, but I think there's still an expectation that you will still be a mother. It's, um, it's almost like a, a given. And I think that that's ingrained in little girls from the time that they're small. Mm -hmm. um, and, and sadly, I think that a lot of women don't question it. And I have yet to find a parent who will admit that they regret having children, because uh, right. apparently that's just a, a horrible thing to ever <laughs> say, even if it's true. But I do personally believe that there are a lot of women out there who, if they could go back and do it again, would have made a different choice, because it almost wasn't a choice. I, I think it's just this path. You you will have children. You will get married. You will you know do these things and, and have a home. And um, I think a lot of people just don't question it. Yeah, that's the thing. And I mean... Uh, this is part of the reason this project is so important because I just want everyone to really think about what they want to do with their life and where they're best suited. And so many women, you know, my mom was someone who I think sh if she went back, she probably wouldn't have had kids. She's a great, great mother and she loved us, um, but she was very, very honest and told me it was hard. It was the hardest thing and it never stops. You know, I'll always be worrying about you no matter how old you are. So my <laughs> life is, is, is about worrying now. Um, and I really appreciated her honesty, to be honest. And I wish, yeah, I wish women could be honest and, in, and not face that judgment because you're right. I actually, I've never heard um, anyone else ever say to me they regretted having children it, it, because they would, it's such a taboo thing to even talk about. Um, and it shouldn't be. 
It is. And I think it's synonymous with it means I don't love my children. And, and that's right. completely untrue. It's mm-hmm. I think, of course, you, you know, someone loves their children. I think it's it, it's fine to say, absolutely, I love my children, but I, I still would have gone back and made a different decision. And, you know, as I mentioned, I have nieces and, and mm-hmm. what's important to me is just, again, that they're making a conscious choice. And so if yeah. if children are really what they want, then, you know, that's absolutely fine. But I want them to know that they have choices. And I try very hard to be a role model um, to younger girls, whether it's my nieces or, or you know, friends, daughters. And mm-hmm. it, it's like, look, you can you can have these things and, and you can travel and have money and have a career and, um, <laughs> you know, yeah. have all the things you want and and volunteer and be a good person. Um, and so it's important to me to set that example for, for other women, because that's all I really hope is that. Um, people make a conscious choice and really sit with themselves and think about, Mm. is this really what I want or is this what is expected of me or what someone else wants from me? Mm. Absolutely. So do you think for your nieces, is it getting easier for women? I mean, will your nieces, when they grow up, will there be, you know, (laughs) no judgments for child-free women at all? What do you think? No, I I think it's, (laughs) it's getting easier, but like many things in, um, society it's it's so slow it's such a a slow cultural shift and and behavioral shift and there's still so much ingrained um at least in the american society uh i i feel it's still something very much that is expected and and as long as honestly as long as there are older women out there questioning those choices and um you know telling women that they should be having children or, or they should feel bad for not wanting them um, then it will keep perpetuating. And, and I, I really don't see that changing. I mean, even amongst very progressive, liberal, you know, women with careers, I hear this, yeah. this sort of thing. And, and so I think it's going to be a very slow change. And, and women still don't have equal rights. We, we don't. Nope. I mean, you, <laughs> regardless of, of all the advances, and, uh, you know, there have been quite a few in the past 50 years, but um, we still don't have equal rights. No, that's, I mean, that's the bare minimum, what we need before yeah. you know, we can, we can get anything else. It's just like, okay, how about you give us the same money as men, you treat us the same as men. And I mean, we're nowhere near reaching that yet. So no. you're right. Progress is so slow. It feels sometimes like we're going backwards. And I mean, watching the US and the political um, environment right now, I mean, it's a bit scary. You, you think, wow, we could actually be going backwards. It's very scary. Yeah, it's very scary. And I, and I know that this isn't, you know, meant to be a, a political discussion. Um, obviously, I'm, you know, I, I'm a, a Democrat, I'm I'm liberal yeah. and, and progressive. And um, it's very scary, because it's not just, you know, one or a few individuals in power, it's ultimately, all of the people who put them there. And so yeah. this belief is pervasive and persistent. Um, and that scares me. Very much. And um, I mean, women's rights seem to be just being cut left, right and center. And to think that maybe Roe versus Wade could be overturned and, you know, just women's reproductive rights and, you know, all of these aspects are possibly going to be reversed and women are going to be set back even further. And that's so scary to me. It is. It is unbelievable. Um, You know, there for a long time, women had children because they had no choice or they had many children um, because they didn't have, you know, reproductive access or, and obviously this still happens in some countries. And, but to think in developed nations, um, mm-hmm. you know, that something like that could happen in, in the year 2020 is just unbelievable to me. It's, it's like, surre- it's like we're living in an alternate reality right now. It is. It really, <laughs> it really is. It is like the handmaid's tale coming to life. <laughs> scary. It's, it's very scary, but I mean, thinking about, you know, positive things. Um, what what are what are the the positive things that you've done with your life that you couldn't have if you had children? So, to any of the child free women out there who may be you know worried about this decision and thinking I'm going to lead a very you know lonely, sad <laughs> life, <laughs> I want them to realize that this is this is not the case. <laughs> it is anything but. I mean, obviously, the, the the most glaring difference is is financial and economical, right? Children are yeah. very, very, very expensive, mm. and um, not having them is. I I'm sure there are um, actual facts and figures on you know how how much more money over a lifetime a, a child free woman has, but um, 
I, I think that's the biggest one. It's so, but having that financial access um, certainly gives you the freedom to do other things. And so, you know, things like travel um, or, or even material possessions or, or buying your first home, things like that. Um, I, I would say the other real positive for me, and this isn't the case for everyone, but because I do have such a big family and nieces and nephews, um, I've been able to dedicate myself, you know, as an aunt and, and, you know, like I said, t- taking them, you know, on trips to Europe and, and flying them around, you know, the world. I, I couldn't do that if I had my own children, obviously. No. And so I've always been, um, a sounding board for my nieces and nephews. And, and the way I look at it as is, um, they need a trusted adult that they can speak to about things that they're not speak comfortable speaking with their parents about, but mm-hmm. also one who will steer them in the right direction. Um, and so, you know, I've always strived to be that for my nieces and nephews is, is you can come to me with anything and, and we can talk about it. And I am an adult and I'm, <laughs> I'm going to give you adult advice. Um, yes. you know, especially if, if I think that, you know, there's, um, you know, harm or, or something like that, but, but I'm not your parent. And so I'm not going to view it with that lens. Um, and I, I think that's an important role that I've played. And, and, you know, my siblings will say the same. Um, you know, I am mostly the, the, the favorite aunt. Um, and, uh, <laughs> of course, I am the one, yeah, who buys the lavish gifts for, for birthdays and holidays. And, uh, you know, uh, and, and I actually, I enjoy that role. Um, yeah. I enjoy doing it from a distance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, yes. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, that's something, had I had my own children, I would never have been able to do that. And I mean, I'm sure, yeah, your siblings are really um, grateful for that position that you have in their children's lives. I mean, you know, if you had your own children, you wouldn't be able to give so much focus to the rest of your family, perhaps. So just because we don't want kids, it doesn't mean we're, you know, uh, we're we're useless as women, which is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Um, there's a, a saying that mother is a verb, not just a noun. And mm. it's true. And, and so I think that we do have the ability to influence children's lives, whether it's whether we're teachers or, or aunts or um, sisters. You know, I, I think we have the ability to, to have that sort of influence on a child's life. And we may not all choose to, um, but it is there. And, and then I would say that the third real benefit and you touched on this earlier is the time to do things like volunteering and, and giving up mm. time and, and having more money to be able to give to causes that we support and um, yes you know I, I think that that can't be underestimated um like you said parents just aren't for the most part they don't have that sort of time and energy and, and money mm. to put into things that are external from their family um and whereas we do and and it's all volunteering has always been very important to me and it is something that I take very seriously like a job um and I think that we have we all have the responsibility to give back in a way that's bigger than ourselves yes and you are an environmentalist is that right yeah (laughs) yes so this is yeah another kind of topic that's interesting with the way the world is going and overpopulation obviously this is a big factor for you know child-free women and uh, you know again maybe this is a positive uh, society that not everyone is producing children but <laughs> it doesn't you know it's not seen as that but this isn't this is really important to you yes it is very important to me and uh, I won't say it's it's the reason I decided not to have children I have heard um, I, I think it was like a, a millennial study uh, where a lot of young women are saying they're not having children because of climate change. I think that's wonderful. That's absolutely wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't say it was necessarily a driving factor for me, but um, it is very important. And I, if I look at, you know, back over my lifetime, obviously the environmental impact that I've had by simply by not having children is huge. I also don't own or drive a car. <laughs> um, so I think that's a, that's another big one. But um, yeah, my environmental footprint is very small as, as compared to a family or parent. I think, isn't it, having a child is basically the worst thing you can do for the environment. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Sorry. <about> right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the reality, right? And, um, you know, the sh- yeah, no one wants to really talk about that. And if you did say that to uh, a person who has a child, it's never taken well. <laughs> no, <laughs> so it's sure. not. And the ironic <laughs> part is if you think about who should be the biggest environmentalist parents, because they're the ones bringing future generations, right? So it are, it's the future generations who are going to have to clean up this mess and, and suffer the consequences of it. And so the biggest environmentalists should, should be the parents who are creating future generations. 
when I'm gone, Zoe, there's, there's nothing, right? There, there's nothing left. Um, mm. You know, I, I will die and that will be the end of it. So why should I care what state I leave the earth in? Right. Um, but, and, you know, likewise, I, I see so many parents who don't recycle, don't compost, don't, they just don't have time or energy and it's just one more thing on their list. And so, but to me, that's, that's really ironic. You're, you're bringing future generations into the world and really not caring what sort of world you leave to them um, or, you know, just leaving that responsibility to them where they'll figure it out. So it's, it, it is interesting to me. Um, and it's important to me as an environmentalist um, that I leave behind a, a better world and have less of a footprint. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to try that, that, uh, tack next time I talk to my, <laughs> I'd be like, well, let me put it this way. <laughs> well, it's so um, true. I mean, what about your, your, your future great, great grandchildren, right? Um, you yeah. don't want them living in this toxic world no. where they can't drink the water and, and, <laughs> you exactly. know, they can't visit beautiful places. It's, it, it, I think you're right though. It's, it's being a parent is so, you know, it sucks your time and energy and you, you just don't even have, anything left to be like okay instead of buying this plastic you know toy car i'm going to look for a sustainable uh toy maker and i'm going to spend more money on you know purchasing something that is better for the environment like they just don't have that uh energy or money to do those things um you know which i get it i get it but yeah it's i think a lot of it is you know consumerism and we're just told you're meant to just buy stuff constantly buy buy the house buy the car the kids toys or you know all of it instead of actually thinking about can we slow this down do we need this stuff um but it's it's breaking that you know that brainwashing almost that this is what you do as a human on this earth and when you yeah. go against that as a child free woman we are kind of saying no to that um it kind of shocks people a little bit it does and i agree with you about parenting, taking time and energy and money that can't be put towards other things. But I also think we shouldn't allow that excuse, right? Because it gets back to, in most cases, it was a choice. I understand not for everyone, yeah. but it was a choice that you made. And so when you made that choice to have a child, you made a lot of other choices at the same time, whether you realize it or not. And mm. there's accountability and responsibility that goes with that, you know, bringing a, a productive human into the world and raising them and, and, and all of that, mm. but also making sure that the impact that they have on the earth is a positive one and not a negative one. And, and I think yeah. probably this isn't something many people think about when they're thinking about having children or um, after they have children. But I personally feel that those are a, the responsibilities of, of parents. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, is, this needs to be more of the um, the conversation when, when you're thinking about having children. It should be more like, how are we going to raise these you know, these kids in a sustainable way that, that makes sure that, yeah, the environment is going to be protected as much as possible um, rather than just, okay, we're just going to do this and think about it later, which you never, and then you never do. Someone once said to me that having children is the ultimate form of hope. Uh, uh, and I, I think it's really true. You are really putting your hopes out there in the world by having children. Um, but I also think it's, it's sort of a, a blind hope in a lot of ways. You know, it's, we talked about like just the current political landscape and where things stand. And so to me, if you are choosing right now at this moment in time to have children and also simultaneously thinking that things are pretty bad, what does that say about you? You're choosing to bring humans into a world that you think is pretty bad. And, and mm -hmm. so that sort of blows my mind, the people who are having children right now um, and also complaining about the state of the world. Um, because mm -hmm. that that is really selfish. I mean, that is, and it's also hopeful in a way that's saying, well, I anticipate that when they're adults, it will be a different world. Um, and I just think that's a that's a bit misguided. Legacy is this thing that is talked about a lot as well when you're thinking about having children and like what's going to be left behind you, you know, if you don't have children, um, you know, which I I don't understand at all I've never ever cared about leaving you know having someone else have my blood and when I die they're here I, I've never ever thought about that what, what are your thoughts about legacy I also don't care about legacy not in the least I, I think that's another very selfish concept of, of the way that people can live on after they're gone I um, I have my estate set up such as that um, when I die it goes to nonprofits that I care about and so 
Um, I chose not to leave it to, you know, various family members. My family's way too big to figure that out anyway. But, yeah. but quite honestly, I mean, um, I, that isn't, that isn't something that I, I think about. I would much rather organizations that I care about, um, know that that money's going towards them. Mm. Absolutely. And issues I care about. Yeah. Uh, legacy is, it's a silly, selfish concept to me. It really is. Yeah. It's bizarre. It is bizarre to me. Um, but yeah, so many people just think, you know, uh, they they put all their bets on on their child, you know, f- fulfilling their life um the way the, I think people don't fulfill their own lives and instead they, you know, put all of their hopes onto a child to do it for them yes. instead of take instead of maybe having the guts to live the life that they want sometimes. Um and, you know, I, I just would much rather just live my life as best as I can and, you know, focus on myself and my community and, you know, spreading the love and and having a positive impact on this world. But, yeah, I mean, when I'm gone, I'm gone. And I'm okay with that. Absolutely. I, I feel the same. Um, you know, you had mentioned overpopulation, and I truly do believe that the earth is overpopulated. I yeah. um there are, you know, movements towards negative population growth or zero population growth. And, and I can get behind a lot of that. Um, mm-hmm. I don't believe that you have the right to, uh, you know, replicate more than yourself. Um, I don't believe that, you know, a, a, a couple has the right to have six children. It, it's just, mm-hmm. I, I think it's irresponsible. Um, I think, you know, the, the earth, I think, has reached its carrying capacity and we're seeing so much of that, you know, whether it's the environmental impact or, or disease or hunger or, mm. um, and I just see overpopulation at the heart of, of much of that. And so I think, um, you know, yes, you may be able to afford to have a child and raise a child, um, and that's fine, but it is still, um, it, it's still placing a, a burden, um, on, you know, on the, the earth. And I think that that's something that a lot of people don't think about either. Um, you shouldn't necessarily have as many children as you can afford mm, um, no. or, or not afford. Um, so I, yeah, I think it gets back to environmental issues. And I think it's just not something that, that people spend a lot of time thinking about because it's so much bigger than themselves. I mean, I wonder when are we going to really tackle this uh, issue like head on? Like it seems so many governments we we're just putting our head in the sand kind of going oh well yeah this country is burning down and we've got you know viruses all over and we you know the world is kind of turning upside down right now and so many things are happening we've got uh, you know ice caps melting and mm-hmm. so we have the signs that we are definitely on a trajectory um that's not good but yet we the main and the main issue is overpopulation but we aren't even doing anything to tackle it. I mean, in Germany, because the birth rate has been so low, they are uh, trying to incentivize women to have kids by giving them, you know, great maternity and paternity packages. And it's like, okay, but why are we why are we incentivizing having more kids? We know, you know, <laughs> the population is so overcrowded. Is the is that shouldn't we be tackling the environment before we do the things like this? But it's like it's such a taboo subject to even discuss regulating how many kids people oh. would have. <laughs> it is a very taboo subject, <laughs> you know, in, in the countries where they've done some of that. Um, it has not gone over well. It is sort yes. of this right this, that people feel that this, you know, they're they're born with this right to, to reproduce as much as they choose to. Um, mm. And I, I really don't think you are. I wish that people were making the decision. I wish that the government didn't have to interfere or, or, you know, that wasn't even a discussion we need to have because people were doing the responsible thing and making the decision, but, but they're not. Um, and I know there are some developed countries, like you mentioned, where they're very concerned about birth rates and, and very mm. concerned about that population pyramid where you have mo- most of the population above the age of 50. And so then there's this concern about who's going to actually do the work in 20 years. Um, but I, I really believe that that all works itself out. I, I certainly, just because we have some pockets where birth rates are down, I certainly don't believe that, um, that we should be concerned <laughs> that women need to have more children. So what about relationships then? Has this decision to not have children affected? <laughs> that's a good <laughs> again, one. <laughs> I'm going to ask the question. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's a great one. I'm single uh, by choice. Um, 
And, but it has very much so. I mean, especially like we talked about in your 20s and 30s when you're, you know, of childbearing age, mm. so to speak. Um, it's something that comes up. Um, I, I'm heterosexual, so I, I date men and, um, it was, it's definitely most, <laughs> most men would say, well, I don't want to have children now, but someday I do. And, right. and so it's something they're, they're sort of thinking about. Um, and so I think it has, for me, it definitely has limited relationships because I learned early on that it's something that I have to put on the table very early, yeah. um, because it, it may have long-term consequences for someone else. And so I put it right out there, you know, first, second, third date, um, look, I'm not having children. Again, now that I'm in my 40s, it has it has changed quite a bit. Uh, the men in my cohort oftentimes are divorced with grown children, um, which which has taken away, I think, a lot of of that pressure. Um, you know, there is no expectation. I probably would not date someone with young children uh, because, again, that's it's it's just messy, um, and I yeah. don't really want young children in my life. Um, I have dated men with, you know, a teenage and, and adult children, and and that's much less of an issue, but you know, the other thing is, Zoe, when I think about the type of person I, I, I want to be with or um, mm. what, tor- you know, what sort of relationship I want to be in, I also have to question, this is someone who chose to have children. And so what does that mean to me and, and what mm. I think about them and our feelings towards each other, that this was something that was important to them and they chose to do for whatever reason. And, and it no longer puts the pressure on me to bear children. But at the same time, um, it does say something about them. And, and that's something I've, I've struggled with. Um, you know, I certainly am willing to date someone with older children, but it is, you know, they're a parent and I'm not. And it, I think, you know, to some extent it puts this barrier there, you know, and, right. and again, they come at it with all the parent, um, prejudices, right. Of, of, you don't understand, you don't know, you didn't do this. <laughs> um, so, um, it's an interesting one. Mm. When when is there going to be like a child free dating app? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I maybe, bet there maybe, is. <laughs> maybe there is exactly yeah because it makes sense right? You, you, of course, you want to uh, be with another person who has maybe the same values and uh, wants to live the same kind of life. And yeah, when an, the other person has children in their life, it is very different, very different. So I'm not surprised that you would want to be with another person who didn't have kids. Yeah, that makes complete sense. Yeah. And it has, it, it, I have run into these challenges, like you said, with holidays. So I love to travel over the holidays and many times I've been on a plane on Christmas day. It means nothing to me. Um, yes. you know, and, and so, you know, I don't ever want to be now that I don't have the expectation of spending holidays with my own biological family. I like to choose where I spend it. And so if I was dating someone who has children and was you know, beholden to celebrate these, these holidays and we wouldn't be able to celebrate them together unless I did the family thing. That's, that would be a struggle, um, to your point. And, and, and even, you know, again, getting back to the whole financial aspect, um, if someone is still supporting growing children, um, with, you know, or, or, um, uh, you know, supporting an ex-wife or, or something like that. I mean, th- yeah. those all impact as a couple, your financial status. And so, you know, I, I want to be able, I'm, I have the means to do things like, you know, go out for nice dinners and, and travel and, and do things that I like to do and have experiences that I pay for. Um, and so it, it's very difficult if I'm with someone who doesn't have the ability to do those things and doesn't have that level of freedom mm-hmm. or, or financial freedom. Absolutely. Yes. So I think a really nice place to end it would be what is your message then to the child-free women out there, you know, who maybe they're not so open about their, de- their decision or, or they can't be or they feel alone because of this decision? What, what could you say to them? I would say stand your ground. There are many of us out there probably more than you realize. Um, if you're yeah. feeling pressure, um, if you haven't fully made up your mind and, and aren't sure whether you want children, but you're feeling pressure, whether it's age or, or from family or society, Really sit with yourself and and spend time thinking about what do I want? Take everyone Mm. else out of the equation. What do I want? What are the things in the next year, five years, 10 years where I want my life to go? And where do children factor into that? And if if children are going to prevent you from achieving some of those things, then have a serious think about whether they make sense for you. And it's not about what anyone else wants. It's not about what your parents want or your partner wants or, or what you think you need to do. Um, and, and again, 
stay firm. <laughs> we Are Child Free is hosted by me, Zoe Noble, and produced by James Glazebrook. If you liked this episode, please leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, as this really helps other people find us. Head to wearechildfree.com to read more stories from incredible child-free women and find out how to share your story with me. Speak soon, lovelies.